Okay, number two. And uh, I didn't really have time, but thanks, GG. I appreciate these comments, and I appreciate you just being honest and telling me what you believe. Just lay, just be honest and, and share what you think. Don't hide it. Don't be ashamed of it. Just come out and say it because, like, for me, if I'm wrong, I want to know I'm wrong. So I'm going to tell you what I think, and then uh, if you present something better, then... Uh, it's very hard to correct somebody. I understand that. So everybody's so full of pride and thinks they know everything. I get it. And so it's a it's an incredible blessing to when you yourself discover that you're wrong about something. And because that's growth, right? You learn you learn something, you correct yourself, and you learn, and that's how you grow, right? And so in in regards to this temple, uh, regards to the angels. Uh, sorry, I I already know I'm I'm not wrong about that. So let's go uh, share bear. I hope you do a big two-hour video again someday soon. I am curious about your testimony. Have you posted it somewhere? Thanks and God bless. All right. So my friend Alex uh, is the one that we've been doing these long Skype videos with. It's been a long time since we've done one. Uh, but Alex is very busy. So if there was somebody else that would uh, like to do like a long Skype video, that would be great. But uh, it's very difficult for me. And then obviously it's very difficult for somebody like Alex. You know, he's so busy and I'm so lazy, right? And so, it, you know, it's hard to match our times with one another. <laughs> and... So that's, you know, that's part of the problem. You got to get, get two people on the same, uh, on the same page and able to do it at the same time. And he's in a different time zone. And so it works better for him to do it later. And, uh, and that's hard for me, you know, to do these late videos. It really is because, uh, you know, late at night I get goofy and, uh, I get, you know, I get to saying some goofy stuff. So I get, you know, I'm saying goofy stuff in the morning when I wake up as well. There's evidence of this, right? So anyways, I appreciate that. Now, uh, my testimony, I don't, I don't know if I've, if I've got a specific video on my testimony. Uh, I've talked about it uh, in pieces. And, um, you know, to give you a short version, in 1995, I got... Uh, my hands on a Bible, and uh, well, I go back before then, 1993, I believe it was, or maybe it was 91, one of the two times, or 92, whenever it was. Uh, I was living up in Minneapolis for a short time, and I came across this uh, gentleman. I was working with this guy, and we were working for his company called Old School Masonry, and you know, old school meant old school so what he would do is he dropped my first day of work he dropped me off at somebody's house in minneapolis you know i'm from small town iowa i'm a long ways from home he drops me off in this garage and he gives me a sledgehammer and says i'll be back at noon to pick you up for lunch he wanted me to bust out that garage floor with a sledgehammer and I, so I started busting it out, and uh, it was all re-rotted, about six inches apart. It was ridiculous. But, you know, I had I was stuck. You know, I had nowhere to go. I didn't have my own car. I got dropped off by my boss, so I had nothing to do but wear myself out for four hours. So anyways, um, but the point is, I, there was another guy that also worked for that same guy. And he, he had about three teeth. And he couldn't say a sentence without using an F word. He was a nice guy. He was just different, you know. Uh, so after work one day, and at this time, I was not a believer. I was a super monkey, right? I was very strongly opinioned in favor of evolution. And I argued against Christianity every opportunity I could. And so this guy... Uh, you know, we're working all day, and then after work, he says, do you mind, he's, he's giving me a ride home. He says, do you mind if I stop and pick up my friend and and uh, give him a ride 
real quick. And I'm like, oh, that's fine. Well, he, you know, he's got a pickup truck, right? Uh, and it doesn't have a back seat to it. So I'm, so we pick up his buddy. And so I'm sitting in between him and this other guy. And this other guy looks like a grotesque monster. And I'm thinking, wow, what's going on, man? I, I wish you could see this image of me sitting between these two guys. Well, the other guy was nice as well. So uh, he just had, he looked different to put it nicely. Uh, and he ends up telling me, he says, do you believe in God? I mean, we gave a, this guy a ride, wasn't even 10 minutes. And he says, do you believe in God? And, he said, and I said, no, I, I'm against all that stuff. He says, well, now is the time to believe because all the prophecies in the Bible are starting to um, unfold. So it's interesting because uh, you know, I'm looking at this guy and he's got boils all over his skin. And he, he tells me that the reason he has all these boils all over his skin is because he was electrocuted and pronounced dead. And then he had surgery and he was pronounced dead. All right, he had two surgeries, I think it was where he flatlined and I thought, well, that's interesting because I mean, that's always stuck with me because my, that, that happened to my mom, uh, when I was like two years old and he described what it was like when he was flatlined and it was pretty, it's just pretty interesting. I can't, I can't describe it the way he did. I just remember thinking it was fascinating, but <clears throat> the point is that he, when he said, because it, now's the time to believe because all the prophecies in the Bible are starting to come true. Well, I couldn't argue against that because I didn't know what the Bible said. So finally, in 1995, I got my hands on a Bible and I happened to uh, live across the, the street. I lived in Monroe and uh, across the street was an old classmate who came over and he was a Bible believer, a Bible reader. And I, I asked him, <clears throat> you know, if he could share some stuff about the Bible with me. And he says that, uh, well, the first thing he asked me, he, sees, he says, do you know what the Gospels are? And I said, well, you know, I mainly listen to heavy metal, you know, death metal, that sort of stuff. And he said, no, 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 no. <laughs> he wasn't talking about music. He was talking about gospel. I didn't even know. I'm, here I am, 25 years old, didn't even know the concept of what the Gospels were. And so he shared that with me, and then he... Uh, recommended that I start reading the Bible in the book of John. Well, uh, you know, I was going to read it, but I was going to, you know, find where it's wrong. I thought I was smarter than everybody else. I'll just read it and I'll figure out what's wrong with it. And then I'll teach the world and we'll all be on the path uh, to, you know, outer space. So, I mean, honestly, that's what I thought. So, uh, you know, obviously by the time I got to John chapter 3, uh, I was realizing the Bible wasn't wrong. I was wrong. And that goes back to, uh, you know, the Word of God is quick and powerful, is a quick, powerful two-edged sword, right? Something like that. Let's see if I'm even close. For the Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit. And of the joints of marrow, and as, as a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. So, as I was reading the Bible, uh, the Bible was reading me, right? And so, uh, I was very con convicted, man. I was like, man, this stuff makes too much sense. And especially, you know, in John 3, when he's having the conversation with Nicodemus, and he's explaining uh, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. You know, it's crazy as much. You know, I spent more time in high school than anybody, and you know, all this uh, time in public school system, I had no idea what Jesus really taught. I had no idea what the Bible really says. You would think education should be about educating children. It's not. It's about brainwashing children. And you can hopefully understand why I'm very much against the public school system. And I have resentment uh, and a little bit of anger toward it because they aren't teaching children, children, the truth. Right. So that, in short, that's kind of a longer, short version. But I appreciate that comment.